All right. So today, I love these calls. These are my favorite transition to group coaching calls because I think one of the key things about having success in group coaching is seeing your peers go ahead of you and have that success. Because I think it often is easy to look at when myself or Jared or Sarah or Jay maybe presents that we think, well, you know, they're a little bit further out than we are. They've done it for a long time. Maybe they had all these different opportunities and they had lots of time on their hand to do it and lots of students. And, you know, that's why it worked for them. And today we've got Jeff Hotchman who, Jeff, when did you, how long ago, how long have you been in RGX now? 12 weeks? Uh, yeah, about 10 or 12 weeks. Yeah. 10 or 12 weeks. And so Jeff has nothing on his plate, uh, very little things going all the time in the world, had hundreds of students following him. So it was really easy for him to have that success. So that's why I wanted him to come on today and present. <laughs> oh, no, hold on. It's the exact opposite of that. Yeah. Jeff, why don't you go ahead, give us a breakdown of sort of what you were doing before RGX, what you're doing now, and just so proud of what you've accomplished over these last 10 weeks uh, with the limited time and all the responsibilities that you have outside of coaching. So everybody, Jeff Hutchman, um, looking forward to it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, and for attending and giving me the opportunity to talk about how I transformed my coaching business and my life in 30 days. And um, what I like to do here is just give you a little bit information about me, tell my story a little bit, my history in the golf business, how and why I signed up with RGX and how now I became a servant leader. So growing up, like, like all of you, we've all had dreams. And um, originally my dream was to be a professional baseball player. I, I love the game and love the sport and played it quite a bit. And at some point I realized that wasn't, wasn't for me. And uh, that's when music uh, took over and I, and I loved to play the piano. And then I, my new dream was to be a concert pianist and I was very, proficient at it. Um, I had a, many scholarships to many different colleges um, that I've turned down because then I just decided that that just wasn't what I wanted to do. And then law enforcement um, became a reserve officer, wanted to be in law enforcement. My ultimate goal was to be in a career where I could either inspire people, entertain people, or protect them. So how in the world did I get into golf? Well, I moved from, in California, I moved from Chatsworth, California out to Palm Springs where they had a golf management program. Um, and I played high school golf, um, but I, I wasn't great, I was okay. Um, but I got into the golf management program at College of the Desert because I wanted to learn more about golf. I had no intentions of actually getting into the golf business. I just thought that if I was around more golfers, around golf, that I'd become a better player and get to play more. Um, I, I was working in retail and one of the ladies I was working with knew that I was in the manager program and knew that I enjoyed golf and she had just moved out with her family and said, you know what, if you like golf so much, you should go work at a golf course. And she says, my dad is opening up a brand new facility called Sun City Palm Desert and, and you should go, you should go apply there. You should get a job. And I, I was like, I don't, I don't want to work in golf. I just want to play golf. And she said, well, if you work in golf, you get to play for free. Well, immediately I made that phone call, started in, in the golf business on Thanksgiving day in 1992 in the car barn. Uh, I was the, the green guy. I was the only one that hadn't worked in golf before. Didn't really know what I was doing. I was the least talented player in the cart barn. And uh, one of the biggest things that we talked about in the car barn was going to the show. Who was gonna go to the show? And the show was going into the golf shop. Who was gonna go from the cart barn to the golf shop the fastest. And uh, I, I wanted that to be me. So I worked extremely hard, worked on my game. And when the opening came in, I was the first to go to the show. And I, I thought it was a, a great thing. You know, financially it was horrible. I was making 550 an hour in the cart barn plus a hundred dollars in tips to making 550 an hour and maybe getting a free sleeve of golf balls or a, or a free glove to go play golf periodically. So I worked on my game and um, was able to uh, pass my player's ability test at Rancho La Quinta. I believe I, I was low medalist. I think I shot 72, 73 uh, that day. So from where I came from to where that was, was just unbelievable. Um, and that enabled me to get into the GPTP program. 
I remember going to the GPTP, the orientation, and, uh, and I believe it was Warren Bakke that was there that, that said, there's a couple hundred people there, and they said, look to your left and look to your right. Two of you are not going to be back. And um, I, I said to myself, that's not going to be me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this work done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue on. I'm going to do great. So I get back to my facility, um, and um, because I had gone to orientation, passed my PAT, my facility allowed me to start teaching. And I was teaching as much golf as I can to help supplement my income. Um, as, as most new professionals, I was probably doing a disservice to some of my students, but they were giving me all the information I needed to become better. Um, at one point, I had a, a buddy call me and said, hey, uh, I'm signed up for level one in the, in the GPTP, you should come. And uh, I was thinking to myself, well, I hadn't done a thing. I was gonna be those two people that, that didn't make it. And I said that I hadn't done anything, but I would love to go with somebody and I would love to room with somebody and save some costs. So I decided to sign up. And from that moment, I crammed and I got my work done. And I'm proud to say within an hour and a half, within a year and a half, I was able to complete all my PGA and become a class A PGA golf professional. From there at work, things started getting better and I was promoted to the head golf professional of a 36 hole uh, facility. Um, and eventually they created a, a position of director of golf where I became the director of golf there. Um, I then in 2004 transferred to Del Webb at Sun City Grand where I became the director of golf there of a 72 hole golf facility. And uh, not only was I in charge of golf, the golf shop, golf operations, I was in charge of the agronomic side, uh, food and beverage, uh, lawn bowling, and everything else that came with that. And I didn't know anything about the agronomy side. So I immediately uh, went back to school and hit the books. And I'm proud to say that I'm also a Class A GCSA superintendent member. So I'm a Class A PGA and a Class A GCSAA. I just wanted to be different and set myself apart from everybody else. Uh, about two years ago at the PGA show in Florida, I ran into a guy that uh, said that we started talking and, and he was a dual member also. He was a class A on both the PGA and the GCSA, something I've never heard of. And he said that he never met anyone as well. And he recently just looked into the PGA and there's about 17 people in the country that have that same designation. And they actually call it a super pro, which I thought thought was pretty cool and just a different way to distinguish me from, uh, from other people in golf. So one of the things that I, with that, I, that I try to continue to do is try to improve myself, which will improve my facility. Uh, I've always been a, a promoter of player development, whether that is uh, golf clinics, teaching the blind, Boy Scouts, uh, having night golf, glow in the dark, or uh, movies on the range. Anything to get people to the golf course, super demo days. We'll do $75,000 on a super demo day or drive or drive chip and putt or putt chip and sip, um, adding more, taking trees away, adding more trees just to help with shade, helping people stay in the game, adding new tee boxes. Um, one of the things we would do is have these blow up um, dartboard and uh, we would take it to non-golf events to try to get people interested in the game of golf. Um, constantly looking for ways to grow the game of golf. Uh, when COVID hit this year, um, I took the opportunity to take advantage of some of the PGA programs uh, that were being offered. And uh, some of those were the teaching and coaching, and I became specialized in teaching and coaching, and I became specialized in executive management. Again, trying to set myself apart from everybody else. Um, and I'm continuing on on the executive management, trying to become, I'm currently in the process of becoming certified, first person to go through the UNLV program through executive management certification. So really excited. But the thing that's really exciting is the teaching and coaching. Uh, learning about ADM, PGA coach, RGX, that is kind of what set things to the next level and what started me to think outside of the box. And that's when um, with COVID, with, I'm out here in Arizona with the record heat that we've had this year. The summer has just been unbelievably warm. I created a six hole golf course to try to get more people involved in the game of golf. And it's that six hole golf course would prove to be a lot better off than I actually had thought at the time. So I had a friend, um, 
another mentor, uh, Tony Travis, that was going through RGX. And uh, he would constantly call me and talk to me about the program and um, tell me how great things are. And when he was going through the specialized program as well, we were talking and he was so excited when he got a call from Will. And he's like, I talked to Will. And I kind of thought to myself, well, I never got a call from Will. But um, through, the, through his program, ended up getting Will in touch with me. And uh, Will and I had a chat on August 25th, uh, talk about kind of what I'm talking about right now, my life, my, my golfing situation, and where I want to be. And uh, we talked about signing up for a program. And I told him that I wanted to wait. I actually have a uh, lady by the name of Jane Berry that um, that coming Friday, I was going to do a coaching session on the golf course with her on the Casper's Trail, that six hole golf course. I had talked to her um, about how I'm trying to transition and wanted to look into transitioning from teaching to coaching. And she is the current um, golf advisory committee chair, past president of our ladies club, a very influential person in our community and gives honest feedback and very well respected. So I talked to her and we went out and uh, on the six hole golf course and uh, told her what we were going to do. The first two holes, I was just going to let her play golf. The next two holes, I was going to talk to her a little bit and just ask her questions, find out what she's doing, why she's doing it, why did you hit that club, how far do you hit it, and on the, on the next two, two holes, the final two holes, that I was going to caddy for her. And um, it was an unbelievable experience. And I had played golf with her one time earlier this year, um, and she's about a 105 shooter. And she was actually very frustrated with the game and wanted to uh, thinking about giving it up because she can't break 100 and she's not having a lot of fun. Uh, so I had my first coaching session on August 28th. On um, 9-1, on that following Tuesday, she played golf with the ladies club. She comes in my office, slams down a gift card and says, I broke 100 for the first time. And it was just unbelievable. Uh, I had a call with Will uh, a couple of a day later or so, and I signed up for the program. And at that point, I had contacted Jane Berry, and I said, hey, can I get a testimonial from you? And she uh, wrote a testimonial, and it was everything I could have wanted and more. And that's when my grand-breaking results on-course coaching sessions were, were released to Sun City Grand. Um, this is the, basically the email that went out. And um, I had two classes that I had signed up. And uh, the, the, the biggest thing here was one of the things that I, when I give a golf lesson, I do 30 minute lessons and I'm $40 for a half an hour. I don't like giving much longer than that. And when I was putting this email out to get, I was trying to figure out what do I charge? If I'm gonna have four people doing these coaching sessions, well, if I did a, it, the Casper's trail takes about an hour, hour and 20 minutes to play with some coaching in there. You know, that's 120 bucks an hour. No, I, I can do more. I'll, I'll go 35 or 40, 45. And, and then finally I got to 50 and I'm thinking, you know what? It, psychologically, if somebody says 50, I might as well go to 55. So I settled on the $55 rate, did this email blast and within minutes, probably 30, 45 minutes, the two on-course sessions were sold out. I immediately added two more coaching sessions and within a day, those were sold out. I remember being on, um, out on the practice green at another facility and uh, actually listening to an RGX uh, podcast. And one of my uh, employees called me and said, Jeff, you gotta, you gotta add more classes. People are on waiting lists. They're, they're coming in. They need more classes. So I added two more classes. So I went from zero classes to six classes in that week. And uh, it was all sold out in unbelievable experiences. And they all paid the $55 and didn't have a problem paying that at all. Uh, I then gave three more um, coaching sessions to repeat uh, students and uh, um, one of the things that Will talks about is always uh, ready, fire, aim. And, and in this situation, I, I kind of fired, got ready, and I aimed. And um, right now we're in our overseeding period, so things are kind of 
in the low right now, but it, it's just been unbelievable. But what I want to talk about here is what I do for golf lessons. You know, golf lessons is just one per, one part of my job, and it's not an area that that has been a lot of focus. And if you can see, in 2018, I gave two, $660 in personal golf lessons, not any clinics or anything, but just in private golf lessons, I gave $660. In 2019, I gave $610 in private lessons. Now, here's the crazy thing. From January through October, the middle of October when I printed this this year, I'd given $2,200 in golf lesson. But what's even crazier is 1,600 of that came in those last 30 days in just doing those coaching sessions. It has, you can see on, on, on the bottom right of the screen, I went from the bottom of the page to the top of the page and giving golf instruction. Something that everybody else, that, that's their job. That's kind of what they were doing as part of their job. And this is just me in 30 days moving to the top of the screen by doing these coaching sessions. I had a uh, resident come to me and uh, I had given him lessons a couple of years ago and he came to me and said that uh, his scores were starting to go back up and he'd love to get golf lessons again. And uh, I gave him a golf lesson. And um, after the golf lesson, I told him that, you know, I'm really not teaching anymore. I'm moving into the coaching model and um, I'd like to ask you, you know, have you be one of my students in the coaching. And uh, he said that he would, you know, think about it. And um, so I sent him this email. And uh, I said, basically an email. Now, this is something I never, ever, ever would have said to anybody six weeks ago. Um, I, again, I'm in the customer service industry. But I told him that if he wants me to continue to coach him, that I, that I want to give you what you need to shoot lower scores and not necessarily what you think you need or want. And uh, again, I was extremely nervous to hit send on this email and I hit the send button and uh, no response. The next day, no response. And uh, now I'm getting nervous. Now I'm thinking that maybe I, I went a little too far, got a little too aggressive. Two days later, nothing. Well, finally, I get an email back from him that I'm in and I'm actually getting three other guys that are in the same level that he is and just as committed to sign up for the coaching program. And it, it just end, ended up being instant success. Um, one of the things that I've, going through this program that I've had a little bit trouble in doing is actually committing students to a six, 10, 12, 16 week program because of my time and, and different responsibilities that I have in my job. Um, so I, but I'm trying to break out of that. I had a uh, golfer come to me a couple weeks ago uh, and said that he wanted a golf lesson. And I explained to him again, uh, this person, that um, I'm not doing golf lessons anymore. I'm transitioning to golf coaching. And what I like to do is take him on the golf course for just a couple of holes and see how he plays and, and see if he'd be interested in, in a coaching program. And I'll do this at, at no charge for him. So he comes out and to the driving range, hits a couple of balls. He hasn't played in a while. I give him a couple of pointers. We're out there for just you know, five minutes or so, and we jump on the eighth hole of the golf course, and we play hole number eight, and he hits, some sh he hits a couple shots, and I say, well, why don't you try this, and why don't you do this, and why are you aiming there, and we play the ninth hole, and the same thing, and the results were unbelievable. His, he had a huge smile on his face, and he was like, where, where do I sign up, and he said, how much do I owe you for this, for this lesson? I said, this one was complimentary. We can sign you up for a coaching program, and he said, no, I need to pay you for this lesson. How much? And I asked him, I go, how much do you think it's worth? I was out there for 25, 30 minutes and he gave me $100. And that's, that's kind of when I know that, that, I'm, that, we're, that I was onto something, that there's something big here. So I ended up getting, he and his wife signed up for a six week program, 30 minutes for the both of them to go out and just play a couple holes or, or do a little bit of um, supervised practice for $100 a week for a total of $600 for two of them. Uh, it's just unbelievable on where this is, is taking me and, and my income level. And this has really changed who I am. Um, I don't know any more about the golf swing today than I did four, five, six weeks ago, but I just know a different way and a better way to apply it. And by doing that, I'm making more money. Uh, 
one of the things I always thought that a lot of people that that have success, well, they were lucky. They they fell into that. And and I know a lot of successful people read a lot. I don't like to read. I'm not a big reader. But what I have done is started listening to a lot of um, positive reinforcement podcasts and motivational speeches. And they're all talking about finding your why, your purpose, and, and why do you do what you do? And that has been unbelievable in my mindset. And it's changed me who I am as a person. It's changed. It's made me more valuable to my facility. It's made me a, a better person. I've increased my lesson fees uh, about 10 days ago from $40 to $45 for a half an hour. I'm re-energized at work and in my personal life. I've added value to my facility. One of the things that, that I've heard that a um, major golf group has found out in player development that for every dollar that somebody spends in a golf lesson, $5 comes back to them, to the club in extra money, whether it be buying a set of clubs, playing an extra round of golf, or, or sitting at the snack bar a little longer, hitting some more golf balls. And that's what I have been doing and adding to my facility. When I first signed up for RGX, you know, it was tough for me to commit to the program and saying that, you know, I, mine were every Tuesday, I think, at, at four o'clock. And, and I, there was opportunities where I could have played golf and I wanted to go play golf, but I, but I had to do this. And at points I was like, oh, why, why am I doing this? But it's that set appointment and my mentors, which was Micah, Paul, Karen, Jay, Will, all of them, keeping me motivated and holding me accountable for the program that I signed up and listening to all the other students that were on the program with me, hearing their stories and hearing why we're doing what we're do doing and, and taking ideas from one and, and moving it to the other, that structure is what I needed to help propel this program and continue to go forward. Um, people around me right now, they're saying that you're changing, you're, you're, you're different. And I'm like, thumbs up. I'm like, that's great because I want to change. I want to change how I teach and coach now. I want to be the coach. I want to change how I pr uh, present my facility. I want to continue to do player development at my facility and grow the game of golf. My job is not just to uh, get people into golf, but how do I keep people from leaving the game of golf? And I truly believe that this RGX coaching method will help people remain in golf like Jane Berry by breaking 100 now. And she's broken 100 many, many times now. Um, you know, my position right now affords me, right now I'm lucky, I'm one of the few, I get to work Monday through Friday, but this program has encouraged me. I, I wanna come out on the weekends. I wanna make some extra money on the weekends, bring my son out, son out, let him hit balls for an hour. Why well, go just do an hour clinic and charge $55 a person for four people, make $220. And I get to see a different group of people that I don't normally see. So I am extremely motivated. I am, uh, there, there's a lot of movement in my facility to continue to, to move on. I will be taking further steps in this program. And I just wanted to say, you know, just say thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my story. Thanks, Jeff. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, for everybody listening, please go ahead and start entering your questions in. I see a bunch of them coming up. I'm definitely going to start off uh, with a few questions. Firstly, you know, Jeff, just a comment on your commitment to, you know, taking strides. You say you're not a great reader, yet you became a PGA pro. And we all know how many uh, books there are and things to read through your first three levels. And so I think that, again, you've got a commitment to working on yourself and following through. And I think that's one of the key things that uh, I would say, yes, there's the accountability that RGX puts on, on coaches to get on the calls. But I think it is one of these things that is so easy to do is just go into a new project, start it off and not finish it. And, and I see you as a complete closer is what my dad always says when he looks at coaches like Jared and stuff. He's a complete closer. And I think that that's a huge character trait that you have, which I would challenge all of us as coaches to try and dig into. So talk to us a little bit about how how do you see that? Do you see yourself as a complete closer? How do you hold yourself to not going and playing golf on that Tuesday afternoon or, or ducking out? What is it that drives you to do that? Well, I, I've, I've been with my facility for 28 years and um, I have to constantly reinvent myself and stay uh, current and stay ahead of the trends. And um, I don't want somebody to come in 
uh, that knows more or, th- or tells people more. I want to be the one that's on the cutting edge and, and I'm trying to get as many opportunities that I can prove my value and my worth to my facility. I love it. And that's what we started the conversation with, right? You said, I want to bring value to my facility. I'm not the coach. I'm not here to be the coach, but I want to make sure there's, you know, my customers aren't leaving the game of golf. I want to make sure that my, my members are playing more. And so I love that you kind of got out of your comfort zone. So one of the questions that Paul asked was, uh, are you rolling this out for other coaches at your facility? Any pushback from the other coaches? So just Give us some thoughts and feedback on that. I know there's stuff probably down the road that you can't talk about, but there's stuff that you might be able to to share with the team. Yeah, so it, it's interesting because the signups, everybody can see the signups. All the pros can see the signups when they're happening. Any pro can go on the uh, point of sale computer and and see who's doing what and how much lessons are driving in. And, and they are all kind of, I want in on this. And uh, right now what I'm telling them is, you know, I'm, I'm in the process of researching this. I'm moving, I'm trying, I'm keeping a log of every student that I've been coaching, trying to track their um, dollar spend, uh, what prior to being coached to what's after. So right now I'm just trying to buy time. There are bigger things on the horizon. Uh, but when somebody comes in and, and wants to work on just a specific item, their driver, I'm pushing them on to the assistant pros. I'm looking for the coaching jobs. I'm not looking for the individual golf lessons right now. So they're actually benefiting from the few lessons that I would give. I'm, I'm moving into the coaching area and um, it's just going to help everybody out. Yeah. And what I love about that with, with Wayne being on and Mike Shirley and some of the coaches who uh, Paul Williamson, you know, they, they understand if you've been a general manager, if you've been a head professional director of golf, you understand that member spend and member retention are what keep you your job. You lose that, you lose your job because the course closes. And so I think that, you know, this again is this movement, right? That RGX is on revolutionized golf instruction worldwide, right? What does that mean? Guaranteeing results for players, getting them lower scores. So they actually stay around and increasing productivity for the golf professional, more money, more value, less time at work. And in doing so, making it more enjoyable for both. And I think that you measuring those things, Jeff, is so vital. And what I'm excited about is three months from now, six months from now, nine months from now, being able to look at that data. Because as director of golf, you get to, a lot of times, if you're a contractor like me, I don't get to get into the books and see how we're impacting. And so it's going to be an amazing case study because it's going to show and really define to golf course owners and management companies, like this is the value of a real coach, someone who really understands what their role is, which is not fixing a swing and selling a time. It's retaining golfers and growing golfers. So I just, I love that part of what you're doing. Um, How are you tracking that, Jeff? Tell us a little bit about like, how are you tracking it? Is it in the POS? Is it a spreadsheet? What are are some of the details? uh, I'm trying to use the POS. It's not going to be a hundred percent accurate, but I'm, I'm just trying to show the value of what the coaching program will bring to the facility and what it is on the scale that it's at right now and what it could be exponentially uh, when we continue to grow it. I have nine other assistants uh, that, and head pros that, you know, this, this could get to be a big, a big thing. Um, You know, and I just want to touch on one thing, you know, this is, you know, not just my life, but it's changing students' life. I, I had a student already just after the first coaching lesson, I will, I sent you a picture on this made me a vase. And it was just so ecstatic. I had a lady in here um, crying because she hasn't been able to hit the golf ball very well. And everybody's telling her, trying to fix her swing and and change things. And I'm just changing her attitude, her mindset, her behavior out on the golf course. I'm not even changing their swing. And it's just unbelievable um, because, and there's not a lot of practice they have to do. They don't have to go spend six hours on the range to learn to aim right on this hole because there's water on the left. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's almost so simple what we're offering. You know, it's so it's just such a common. It's it's a little bit like coaching. Double your hourly income, reduce the price to the student, play more golf on the golf course, enjoy it. It's like no, there's got to be something wrong here. And when you get on the course and tell them, stop thinking about your swing, just let's play the game. It's almost like no, there's got to be more. And it's like no, no, no. <laughs> this is what you need right now. Right, and I get I I I, I bring my clubs out. And depending upon the group on how many shots I'll hit, I'll play a hole, I'll play a couple holes, or, you know, we don't always even play six holes. We'll drop a ball. You know, if I saw somebody hit a a poor shot or tried a shot that should not be trying, again, I'm focusing right now on breaking 100. So my my golfers are the higher handicappers. When they try to hit a flop shot over a bunker to a tuck pin, you know, 
you know, then we'll drop a bunch of balls and, and show different ways to play the shot. And, and maybe we don't play two holes because we spend an extra 20 or 20 minutes on this particular area, but I'm giving, it's non-scripted. It is all during that, during the moment is how we're going. I, however the group is going, that's where we're going to go. Yeah. And I love what you're talking about there. Cause we, we discuss that a lot, right? That you are not really the instructor. You're the master of ceremonies. You're, you're out there managing the course time, managing the people, keeping them at a good pace, making sure they're, they're learning, giving them a space to learn, not trying to fix them. And this is a question that Stephen said, uh, how do you manage your time on the course? I'd find, I would find that our on course tends to take a little more time and may come under pressure if the course is busy. So obviously as the director of, of golf, you need to make sure the course is not getting jammed up. So give us some of the things that you do, Jeff, to make sure you can and not slow down play, not, you know, not cause a problem, clog the system, as they would say. So one of the advantages I have is I have four courses and uh, being the director of golf, I have a little bit more pull. Um, but we allow uh, right now during COVID, uh, normally during the winter, we're always shotgun, shotgun, shotgun. So that's very difficult for me to do. But because of COVID, it's really worked in our favor because we're tee times only. Uh, which leaves the back nine open for nine hole play. Well, I got three other courses right now that I can do back nine play on. And I'm um, using Casper's trail on the course that I actually um, office out of. And we, play, we start on hole number 10 and we jump to hole number 14. So even if I get out there 10 or 15 minutes before the first group makes the turn, even if they, even if they catch me on hole number 10, I'm now on hole number 14 and they're playing 11, 12, 13. And I'm only out there for, uh, again, I'm, I'm out there for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. This is not a, a two hour deal. It's about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes of my time. And, and uh, that's how I manage it. Once we hit that time, I'll move in. And, and I've been at on the 16th hole where I'll say, okay, we're jumping to 18. And we might even, the 18 is a par five. So we might even start at 250. We might not even play yeah. the whole hole. Yeah. And I think that's such a key thing, right? Is it that, there's two parts to it I see. One is our students are quench. I mean, they're, they're just dying to drink from the fountain of actually being on a golf course with a professional, hitting shots over a bunker, hitting shots off of a side hill, hitting shots off of a downhill, reading a putt on a green, that we don't need to make it where it's nine holes, you're going to finish every shot. You have to set the expectations and let them realize that you're here to help them play the game of golf. And today, what you see is this is what we're going to work on. Right. And they just keep coming back for more because it's it's never ending. I mean, you can't not you can go and play golf with them 100 times and they're still learning and developing as they right. improve at the next level of mental or core strategy. And, and, and I love the group format because even in my uh, invitation, my first email, I talked about the group pressure. And that's why we're doing it in groups of four, because I want to put pressure on you. I want you to feel the pressure because everybody's feeling the pressure. Heck, I. You, you want to know what kind of pressure I felt on my first coaching session was un, was unbelievable, extremely nervous, and and it's gotten better and and more comfortable as I as I continue to go. Um, but it's just amazing, just giving little things. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Callaway ERC ball with the triple track technology. Mm -hmm. I give every player one of those balls and just teaching them how to line up, and and they put the ball down. And they, they just put it down. And we all know as golfers, if you just put it down and you don't step back and you don't walk away, it can be a little off. You have to step back to actually see if it's lined up correctly. And taking those few extra minutes, they've all been told to play, hurry up and play and keep on playing. And I'm actually kind of teaching them the other, that if you take a little bit more time around the putting green, you might actually increase the pace of play because you're going to take less shots. Yeah, Absolutely. You, you talked about there about your initial um, sort of anxiety before getting in and some of those things. And Jay, you asked a great question. Um, great to hear your success. During your initial rollout, what kinds of objections did you face and how did you handle them? So you kind of talked about a little bit about that, how you talked about getting them into a group. Were there any objections from people? Was there a money, a time, a, a groups? What was there? Not one objection. That's what's kind of really made this so easy. Uh, for me. Um, they're just, they just want more and uh, it's tough being in the overseeding and then we're car path only for three weeks. So I'm going to wait until after all that to really get out there. But um, I, I haven't, I've been fortunate to not have any resistance at all. Oh, that's nice. Well, and I think again, you've built very strong relationships with these people and, and you've been able to search for the clientele, right? You didn't go out there and try and open up a hundred spots. It was, I've got eight people 
here's what I'm doing, here's my message, and, and people are going to be attracted to that, right? And that's really where how you gain followers and how you build a pioneer team is pick people that really want it rather than people that you've got to convince. Because if you've got to convince them, they're probably not the best fit for at least your first couple teams as you start to get your confidence. Right. No, and it's it's being able to be, like you said, to be selective. Uh, and, that, and that's what I'm trying to do. I, you know, I, I am not the guy uh, to give the golf lesson. And after every swing, the person says, so what did I do on that one? What did I do on that one? I, I, I can't do that. and will not do that in, yeah. any, anymore. And so now that, that message has now changed. So you're willing to really stay that. So you're really, uh, Paul asks, is, is that because you've addressed the objections beforehand? So two things, one in the flyer, but now how you're talking to people, you've shifted from being, sorry, that's not who I am. You're, you're defining who you are and you're okay with that rather than being like, oh, it's 75 bucks or $45 for half hour. I should go and do that. So talk about how you how, how that's changed to you. So you're, you're getting clearly defined and you're getting okay with saying no to people. Talk about that journey. Right. And um, again, extremely difficult, uh, but going through the classes and, and talking to Paul and Jay and 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 Micah and everybody and Karen it, it, and seeing the other students and what they're doing and hearing the other success stories, it, it's really shown me the way that that's what you need to do. And um, it, it's hard, you know, I'm not going to say I'm never going to fall back and, and, and have a slip up and, and, and take that one lesson here or, or, or so, but um, I'm really trying hard to stay the course, continue with the coaching and not do the individual golf lessons to fall back in that routine because um the time is kind of what's valuable for me. I, I do have, you know, I am not the guy that's behind the desk all day long. I'm out and about um, driving the courses, talking to the members. Um, but if I can see four members for an hour, an hour and 15 minutes and help them with their game versus seeing one student for a half an hour, I'm going with the four students for the hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we actually have Paul Williamson on the call, who was your mentor throughout this with Karen and Micah. So Paul, you can unmute yourself and you can give us some insights. Talk about your, your experience and your journey. Obviously, you being a mentor now at RGX, talk to us about you, Jeff and how you enjoyed this, the, the journey. Yeah, thanks. Um, got me out there a bit. Well, I was just kicking back, relaxing, listening to Jeff's great story. <laughs> no, I've got to say... Um, Probably the biggest thing I noticed with Jeff, um, probably compared to just about any other coach I've seen, is that he was willing to really jump in with both feet straight away, despite his apprehensions and his um, anxiety a little bit about it. And, and it's probably like all of us when we first start talking about, no, you know what, I'm sorry, I don't want to take this one hour lesson anymore and you know, we're going to do it this way. So to see Jeff do that was, was a real credit to him. Um, and I think that's a big, part of his success is that he, and as soon as he saw that initial uh, little bit of success, he's got, Hey, this actually works. And then he's just, you know, gone all in, which was fantastic. So um, I'm, I'm definitely with, you know, myself uh, as a coach at a facility with six other coaches as well. I'm very intrigued by, um, by Jeff's uh, future going forwards about, you know, with all the other coaches, that's what I was inquiring about. Has he got any feedback from, uh, from the others there? going forwards, but it sounds like that's all pretty good. And some of them would be willing to roll out themselves, Jeff, by the sounds of that. Yeah, the um, the, um, the the tough thing is actually being able to handle all the students, I think, that, we're, that I'm going to have here. And um, there are some things on the horizon that Will and I have been talking about that I can't really talk about now, but uh, we are looking at really making a push forward. There are some exciting things that are going to happen with the coaching out here and I'm just looking forward to the opportunity and and what it's doing again it's making people better quicker and and seeing a completely different change in how they play golf and and that's what's you know just after one coaching session you see the smiles you see the the eyes light up and and you, you didn't get you don't get that with a 30 minute golf lesson because after hitting 30 chips you're going to start getting them closer you know 10 putts in a row, that 10th one is going to maybe go in. Um, so this is just, you know, they get one shot out there um, and they're seeing results. And it's that, that's what's rewarding for me, um, seeing results. I would also say there, Jeff, one of the, one of the good things that I like you're doing, and, and Paul, you just mentioned it, is you fired. And the, the whole concept behind, you know, ready, aim, fire compared to ready, fire, aim is, is that you only know where the bullet goes after you fire it, right? And then you change the sight. And so 
there's two, there's two things I like here. One is that you were so willing to start to do that because again, golf professionals tend to be perfectionists and want to get it right. What they don't realize is on the other side, the people are drowning. And if you throw them anything, they're going to grab it, right? I mean, they'll, you throw them a piece of wood, you throw them anything, they're going to grab it. Because again, look at the stuff that we do. We go out there as golf coaches and go, hey, I got the new Mevo. And they're all cool. Uh, CBD gum. Oh, God, I get it. You know I mean, like they want to be, get better at golf. So when you come out with anything, you got to realize they're, they're excited. And if it sounds logical, and if it sounds common sense, and it sounds like it might actually work, they're ready to take it. The second part I like though, Jeff, is that with getting the other coaches on board, that you did have this, this idea and, and this, so not an idea, real belief of, no, I need to make sure this runs well. Not because, oh, I'm making all the money because your salary is from being the director of golf. It's because you ex the customer experience needs to be right. And it's very easy for nine other pros or you know to, to run out there and go, I'm gonna make more money and then start selling this as a fix and it's a Band-Aid on their lessons, rather than no, you went through a transformation, you changed how you see things, how you teach, how you talk, how you ask questions. And it's not just a, hey, let's all have all the pros do it, make a bunch more money and it'll be good, because that's the sort of thing that can just burn out very quickly. So I liked how you pushed when needed, but also were able to back off and say, no, 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 they need to be trained in this and we need to take a little bit more time so the member experience is right because it was in your control under you, but with everybody else that's out of your control and can affect, uh, it can be create a bigger problem than it, than it can actually solve. Right, and this isn't hurting any of their um, lesson income. Again, I can see the reports, um, but you know, they're, they're at the front counter. So when a, when a customer comes in and somebody asks, hey, who teaches golf lessons? You know, my, my response, in the, if I was up at the counter, my response in the past used to be, well, there's myself and there's nine other golf professionals and we have men and we have ladies and we have apprentices and, and we have all different kinds where the, whoever the golf professional behind the counter is, I do, I teach, you know, when do you want a golf lesson? Um, now, if I'm, if I'm in that position, I don't even say, well, we have nine other professionals. I'm like, well, what are you looking to do? What is your goal? What, you know, now I'm asking them questions. Now I'll either take them on or I'll push them to an assistant. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm just going to drop I in a couple. Oh, good. One question there. Sorry. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. Jeff, I, I just wanted to um, just jump back into your tracking of all that data there, Jeff, and um, being a director of golf. Um, what are your thoughts for some of the other coaches out there that? the value of doing that and being able to present that to, do you have a board of directors or something that you answer to? And, you know, are you, are you presenting that to them regularly and along those lines? And what kind of value do you think um, just even say a contracted, just one off contracted teaching pro at a, at a venue who's answering to a board or a committee, what kind of value do you think that, uh, that it'd have for them? So I'm, I'm just beginning to get all that data. Um, I haven't had a huge, you know, I don't want this to be a huge time, where I'm focusing more on that data. So I, I've been taking my time on that. I, re, I report to a general manager of the facility and the general manager reports to the board of directors. Um, this program doesn't necessarily need to show that members are, are spending more. Um, I, I have enough rapport with the, with, the, with the residents, with the community here that all I do need to really do is, is say, hey, this is where we need to go. Um, so I don't really need to provide them all that data. Um, and I got to be careful, you know, down the line, I got to be careful because if I start providing them too much data on one thing, they're going to want data on, on something else. So um, I, I haven't figured out how I'm going to present it or if I will present that. Paul, what Jeff doesn't know yet, you know, behind my little sneaky brain is, uh, is that we're going to, he will be whatever management company or ownership company he has. I don't know which company it is. I won't name it, but I think he'll be their lead um, CEO, chief engagement officer out training all of the staff at all the locations that will come to him. He won't be able to leave. He'll have to leave because his, 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 his kids are there. And I think that's what will be it. It may, may not be what he wants to do in the next two years, but I think that's what I'm going to have him do. <laughs> I think you can see behind it, Paul and Jay and everybody like Jeff, how committed you are and how focused you are and the opportunity that management companies need more people like you who just value the customer and want to help them and are willing to get outside of the realm of 
this is what we offer compared to no, this is what we offer, whether it's a dartboard that you can ship onto or a movie on the driving range. I don't know if you know Don Ray. So Don just, so Don, you know, is just become our new secretary and I was on a committee with him and he's, he's just, you know, just the same way, right? Anything to get the families involved at Augusta Ranch in Arizona and bring everybody in. And, and I think that's what we need more of, you know, because if we want to grow this game, we have to prove the value of a professional, whether you're PGA, LPGA or not, we need to we'll show our value because that's what's going to grow the game of golf and keep us in, in our business for sure. Um, Jay Cook, any final thoughts or questions? Uh, I don't see any other questions coming up. You always have great ones to ask. What, uh, what are your thoughts as I put you on the spot? Well, I mean, Jeff knows what I'm going to do uh, because <laughs> his answer wasn't, wasn't okay with me. Uh, I understand he hadn't had any pushback so far. So, you know, I have to, to hold yep. your feet. To I know how that goes with Jay. <laughs> All right. So for those people who aren't as good as you or aren't as lucky as you or both, uh, and we know that we need to rehearse our stories to try to be prepared for eventualities so we're not only confident but authentic, if someone had objections, how would you handle it? For example, what would you say to somebody that said, I don't, I don't get this coaching thing. I've, I've had lessons for a long time. That's, you know, and I am, I'm not comfortable playing with other people. What are you going to tell them? So uh, of course, Jay, you would ask all those questions. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, what I would explain and what I'm working on is to explain to them that the people are continuing to take lessons and, and they're not seeing a change. What my coaching will do will take you onto the golf course to help make that change and show you a different way to apply the skill set that you already have uh, to play better golf. Well, yeah, I mean, I get that. But but if I can't hit the ball, if I'm topping it down the fairway, how's coaching going to help me? So what we would do is um, find out where you are at at first, if you're topping the golf ball, I'll get you into a group clinic uh, with beginners and we'll start from the putting green out and work on building your confidence and, and learning how to get the ball airborne until we work all the way back to your driver. All right. Come on, Jay, keep going. I'm satisfied I'm with that so far. I don't want to play with other people. Jeff, I don't want to play with other people. I want to be on one-on-one. -on -one. Well, you know, and I, and I haven't addressed, I haven't gotten into that yet. Well, I had that question hasn't been asked and um, I've thought about it a little bit and, and my, my fee is $220 an hour. Then if you want an on-course coaching session for an hour. That's a good one. What else, what else would you come up with? I don't know. I'm stumped on that one. I think I would go down the idea of, uh, Jeff, do you play golf with other people when you go out and play, or do you play on your own always? Right. Okay. I got you. I know where you're going. Okay. And, and then they say, well, we'll play with other people. Okay. So teaching you on your own isn't simulating the pressure. So you're not, you play well on your own, correct? Oh, I play great when I'm on my own. What about when you play with your friends? I play terrible in tournaments. Then I need to create pressure for you. I need to break an environment that allows me to see how your game breaks down. So I can see what the real problem is because it may not be your golf swing. Maybe that you walk too quickly, that you rush, that you don't have a practice swing, that you take too much time. I don't know. Until I can put you in that situation, I won't know. So if you're not willing to get in a group, then I'm not the coach for you. And, and, and you know what the perfect example of all this is? And Jay, thank you for the question. And Will, it, that I'm still learning. And again, I'm only four or six weeks into this and no matter you know all the calls that i've been on and this call even is trying to tell my story is that i'm still learning and that's what being on these group calls does is you continue to absorb more information from different people yeah exactly constantly mastering your art right it just never ends you're always learning a new way to communicate a new thing to ask a new question to you know how to handle an objection how to track information and things like that so all right, let's take a look. We're at 12.50. Are there any final questions before we wrap up? Uh, let's just, well, if you want to text them in, uh, you can, or if you want to unmute yourself. 
we'll do the uh what's that that jeopardy do, 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 do. <laughs> okay well for those of you i'm gonna put in here right now for those of you who are current coaches and you're like oh my god i need to get the calendar i need to get back in on calls oh, i haven't been doing stuff i've got questions i'm gonna go ahead and put in here support at rgx coach Dot com and reach out to Micah and get, get back on calls. It's the time of the year to start working on your business. As the weather goes cold, it's time to get busy. For those of you who are, are not RGX coaches and realize like this is the sort of transformation I want. I've got questions. I, I know I've got potential, but I don't know how to do it. Please go ahead, click on that link. Um, we'll send it out to you as well uh, just to go through an application and then let's get on a call together and see how we can help you. Uh, Jeff, super pleased for you, super proud of you, very excited about the journey ahead and definitely look forward to having you back on here in another 90 days and just see that development of what's next as you start to get that footing and as you head into season, you know, um, how you start to manage the time, how, how the other coaches are taking it, what your students' results are, what the numbers are. So it's going to be a lot of fun to go on that journey with you. So everybody, thanks for taking the time today. Much enjoyed, Jeff. Outstanding work. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Fantastic.